Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. Now that we've got our override orb set up and throwing and the physics are all there and we know everything's working, we've still got some things that aren't working. If you noticed, when I press play here and I throw this orb, it'll get destroyed and we won't get a new one. Well, that's kind of lame for the player. I mean, I guess we could sit here for eternity, but the player's not going to want to do that. The next thing is, if we did implement a way for this ball to regenerate, then the player could just endlessly throw it until they win. There's no real challenge involved. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a way for the orb to regenerate and for the player to only have so many attempts. And the way we're going to do that is through the scene manager. So let's expand the scenes folder in our project explorer. And if you remember, we created this capture scene manager, but we haven't really done much with it. So let's double click it to open it in our IDE. Double click the capture scene manager. And we're going to start by adding a few variables. This manager is going to be running every time that our scene loads up. So this is probably a good place to control all of this from. The first variable we're going to add is a serialized field, private, int, max, throw, attempts. And by default, we're going set to set this to 3. The next variable we need is a private, int, current, throw, attempts. And then I'm going to set a getter for both of these. So max throw attempts and current throw attempts should each have a getter. So public int capital M max throw attempts, set of curly braces, get, and then another set of curly braces, return max throw attempts, and the same thing for current throw attempts. Perfect. Now we can get these values anywhere that we need to, for example, in a UI manager. OK, now that we've got those, we're going to need a couple of functions. The first one that we're going to need is going to be start. So let's say private void start, and we're going to make a function call to a function we haven't written yet, but we're about to. So we'll call calculate max throws. And for now, that's all for our start function. So let's go create calculate max throws. And it's going to be a private void function. It's called calculate max throws, just like we wrote above. Now, the point of this function is to determine how many maximum throws the player is allowed. And I know what you're saying. But Ben, we already determined that with a variable. But this function is just here to give us some flexibility. Allow me to explain. So we have a game where players are leveling up by capturing droids. What's the benefit of leveling up for the player? Well, one of those benefits, depending on how you decide to customize and enhance this game and really make it your own, one of the benefits could be the number of orbs that the player is allowed could be directly tied to their level. So what you could do is consider the max throw attempts up here to be a starting point and then have some kind of calculation to say, OK, I want to take the starting point. And if the player is level five or above, go ahead and add an extra throw. If they're 10 and above, throw another extra throw and on and on and on. Another thing you could do here is determine the player's inventory and say, hey, how many of these orbs have the play has the player gone and gathered from the world? If you decide to make these override orbs a game object that the player can collect or even purchase from a cash shop or anything like that. The key idea here is abstraction. We want to make it as easy as possible for ourselves to develop this however we want and provide maximum flexibility to ourselves so that down the road, if we change things up, 
we don't have to do too much to change it. So just as a visual example so you can see it, say I wanted to do what I mentioned just a minute ago, where for every five levels, the player gets an extra throw attempt. At that point, I can say max throws, or rather max throw attempts, equals max throw attempts plus game manager dot instance dot player or current player dot level divided by five. And to clean this up even further, we could just say max throw attempts plus equals game manager dot instance dot current player dot level divided by five. So if the player is under level five, zero attempts would be added. If they're five to 10 or five to nine, rather, one attempt would be added. 10 to 14 would give us two and you get the idea. But for now, we don't really need to do that. What we can do instead is just say that we want our max throw attempts to be whatever we set and nothing more. And we'll just leave this function empty for the time being. It can be there as a convenience for you to help you know where to start to customize your game later on. The next function we need is public void orb destroyed. Now what this function is going to be for is when we throw our override orb, it goes out and eventually it powers down, whether it's hit something or it's still in the air. Right now, we're not doing anything to manage that. We're just letting it die and calling it a day. What we want to do instead is we want to say current throws or current throw attempts minus minus. Now our current throw attempts is going to decrement or be reduced by one. And we can check to see if we're over zero. So if current throw attempts is less than or equal to zero. Then we're going to run some code to end the session. Else, we want a whole nother orb. So make a new orb. But real quick, we forgot to add something up here in our start. After we calculate the max throws, we are going to want to say current throw attempts equals max throw attempts. To start the player off with their maximum throw options. OK, so back to orb destroyed. For orb destroyed, it's actually pretty simple to implement this new orb. What we're going to do is add one more serialized field here. And we're going to say serialized field private game object orb. After we've added our game object, let's go ahead and add a serialized field private vector three. And we're going to call this spawn point. Now let's go down back into our orb destroyed function. And we're just going to say in, inside of this else statement, instantiate orb spawn point and quaternion dot identity. Let's save that. And let's go make sure that this is working. So let's swap over to Unity. And real quick, we're going to click on our override orb and press apply, just in case we've got all of those unapplied changes that we're going to need if we instantiate another one. And then we need to add our scene manager to something on this scene. Let's go with the main camera. So I'm just going to drag this over, drag the capture scene manager onto the main camera, and I'm going to go down and make sure that I add our override orb prefab to this game object slot orb. And now we need to update our spawn point because right now it's at 0, 0, 0, which means our next override orb is going to spawn at 0, 0, 0. 
So what we can do is we can go over to our objects prefab and I'm going to grab the X position and copy and paste that into the X position of the capture scene manager. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the Y position. So copy the Y position from the override orb, click on the main camera and go back to go down to the Y of the capture scene manager on the main camera and paste it in. Copy the Z from the override orb and do the exact same thing for the main camera and its capture scene manager. Paste it into the Z position. Perfect. Now, whenever this function gets called, the orb destroyed function inside of our capture scene manager, it should go ahead and spawn an orb unless we are out of orbs. So let's set that up so we can test. We'll do that by going to the override orb script. Double click the override orb script from your project explorer to open it up in your IDE. Going all the way to the bottom. We want to go to this power down function. And just before we call destroy, we're going to say capture scene manager manager equals find object of type capture scene manager. And if manager, if manager is not equal null, then we're going to say manager dot orb destroyed to let our manager know, hey, an orb just got destroyed. Perfect. Now we could set this up a lot like we had the droid set up. But where, as for now, we only plan on having this actual orb object in one scene, we're not too worried about setting it up for use in other scenes. If we, rep if we do something like, say, represented in a menu, we may not have the actual object set up. We may just have a graphical representation of it, and then another class controlling things like collisions and taps and all of that. Cool. Now we should be calling the manager.orbdestroyed function every time an orb powers down. Let's head back to Unity and see if that's actually happening. Let's press play. And we've got our orb here. No other orbs are generating. So I'm just going to throw it. And we have a brand new orb. Perfect. I'm going to throw this one. And we should be at one orb left at this point. So if I throw this one, no more should generate. Perfect. Now we can manage whatever happens when we run out of orbs or we hit the droid. We're going to go ahead and call this video good. So let's save our changes and get ready to actually implement this and make it do even more cool stuff. Great job following along. You are doing great so far, and you should really be proud of yourself. Let's continue on and finish off this super awesome game. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.